This morning at the recording of this video, it was announced that Salesforce is laying off 8,000 employees due to over hiring leading into what most say is going to be a recession in 2023. And this comes after months of layoffs from huge companies like Tesla and Facebook and other technology companies. Here is how you can best position yourself in a job interview for a chief marketing officer to get the job. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman and I talk about the coolest and most exciting business marketing and sales strategies so that both you and I can grow our businesses or professions together. Today I'm talking about how to position yourself in a CMO job interview to get the job. Now I've got quite a bit of experience in this, not actually as a chief marketing officer in the traditional sense, but a large portion of what Good Monster does, my company, is provide fractional CMO and marketing teams. And so I've been through probably definitely tens and probably into the hundreds of interviews or prospect meetings to see if I or my team is a good fit as a fractional chief marketing officer or a marketing lead in fast growing companies. And so I have a unique position because I'm not, I don't need the job, right? Of course, we want to win the business, but I'm not looking for a job to feed my family. What I'm doing is I'm trying to find a good fit for my company and their company. So unlike probably you, I don't need those jobs. And so I'm able to approach those interviews in a much more relaxed sort of uh, identification sort of consideration sort of way. I want to make sure that they're a good fit for me and us and that we're a good fit for them. But I really encourage you to take these tips that I'm going to explain to you because they work. They've gotten us lots of work as fractional CMOs and, and marketing leads, um, and I believe that they can do the same for you. Okay, the first thing to do is to really try to prepare yourself in the interview to be calm and relaxed and approach this like you are interviewing them. If you've done some research, I have no doubt that you've come across this tip before, but and I know this is hard for some of you, especially if you have kind of stress and anxiety in your DNA. Um, I have experience with that in my life, but I understand that this might be hard to do. But if you can go into this interview or this opportunity, simply remembering that this is not the last job interview you will have, and it will, is not the last opportunity that you will have, and that if you take this job just because you desperately need it, you might be headed into an even more stressful position in your life. It might not be the good fit for you. You might be outclassed. You might get the job because you hacked your way in the interview perfectly, but then now you have a huge amount of responsibility to deliver results in the first 90 days. And if you can't achieve that or you don't feel confident enough to achieve that, it might be worse off and you might be fired. You might have to quit. You might be stressed out, anxiety, right? All of those things. So Tip number one is do whatever you have to do leading up to the interview to make sure that you are in a position where you can walk into that interview or walk into the video if it's a Zoom interview and be confident enough to interview them and ask them questions. Be prepared. You need to be prepared to answer their questions as well. Like, what have you done? Tell us how much revenue you've driven for previous companies and prepare to be honest with that. If it's not a good fit, it's not a good fit. But be calm and relaxed and interview them in a collaborative way. That's tip number one. Okay, tip number two is show advanced knowledge, progressive knowledge of the marketing industry. Now, if you've been in marketing for 20 years, the tendency is to say, I've done this. This is the way we did it. I can bring this to your company as well. But the world is changing faster than we have ever seen before. And companies are constantly changing where their focus needs to be. They're changing what their concerns are. Heading into 2023, their concerns are the recession. And so talking to them about something that worked five years ago might not be the best fit. And they're not going to tell you in the interview, okay, you're going to think, oh, I just told them all about these SEO strategies that we've used over the past five years and how it's going to work for their company. But in the back of their head, they might be like, well, you know what? We just tried that for two years. And that's the reason why we fired our last CMO is because they were bringing old tactics to our company, which is looking for modern new tactics. So instead, challenge the status quo of things that have been done. Think TikTok in 2020. 
All right. Pandemic brought TikTok boom and basically put it on the map as the fastest growing social media platform on the planet. And brands were constantly jumping into TikTok and figuring out how to use it. In fact, there's several TikTok agencies that became the fastest growing agencies because they specialized just in TikTok videos. There's brands like Elf Cosmetics that blew up on TikTok because they went all in on TikTok. So being an early mover and fast mover is definitely valuable. Think ChatGPT today. ChatGPT released a few months ago is now all the rage. I just did a video on it, it how it's going to change marketing. Talk about this in your job interview. Talk about AI. Talk about how AI is changing and making things more efficient and faster and provides the foundation for research, which used to take 20 hours of research, now takes 20 seconds. Speak to this in the interview and, and be honest about it too. Don't claim to know everything there is to know about AI writing if you don't know everything there is to know. Instead, acknowledge it and say that this is growing every single day. And I think it's very valuable for myself and you and, and us as a company to pay attention to where we can plug and play this to add value to existing processes and protocols. Talk about these things. Talk about where pl different platforms are, where they have been, how we can use them. Talk about experimentation. UGC content, for instance, can save a company so much money versus producing their own in-house content or even having an agency produce content. Having the public, having customers, having people produce content for social media and then sending it into your brand and then curating that is a much more cost-efficient way and in many cases gets way more engagement because of the position that we're in in the marketing industry. People like seeing real people's content. They don't want to see advertising and overly produced content in most cases. So speak to this in your interviews and you will win over uh, the hiring team most likely because they're going to see that you're paying attention to the future. You're not just holding on to the past. Okay, next, make sure you're speaking to the concerns of the industry or the market or the economy or the particular company. You know, do your research about the industry. Do your research about the company. Find press releases, find blog posts, find social media content. Look at everything that they're doing and use that to kind of come up with your own inferences about what's going on, you know, in that sort of world so that when you go into the interview, you can talk about things. For instance, most companies, B2B or B2C or retail or blended are looking for profitability in 2023. They're not looking for top line revenue because we're headed into most likely a recession. And aside from recession proof brands, they're looking to make sure that they're not going to get caught where a lot of companies have been caught previously. Like Salesforce just laid off 8,000 people. Facebook and Tesla, they all laid off a bunch of people last year, right? Because they overhired after a boom during the pandemic, a digital boom that we had during the pandemic. All right. So they overextended. And so these companies now are looking for profitability. The companies that you're interviewing for most likely are going to be looking for profitability, even if they don't know it yet. So in the interview, if you can talk about reducing the cost to acquire a customer, increasing the return on ad spend, increasing the marketing margin or the uh, return on investment of the overall marketing department, talk about chasing this. Talk about chasing customer retention rather than customer acquisition, okay? Customer acquisition is expensive. Usually, you spend a lot of money to acquire a customer, and then you try to keep them for as long as possible to pay that CAC back, that cost to acquire a customer. Talk about that in the interview. Say that, I think, you know, I, I don't know enough about your business yet. I've done a bunch of research on it, but I don't see the internal nuts and bolts and inner workings of it yet. But my guess is that heading into 2023, we should be looking for more margin. We should be looking for more profitability. We should be looking for more efficient marketing, not top line growth, revenue growth. And even talk about if your goal is top line revenue growth, say it's going to be very difficult to chase top line revenue growth while achieving profitability. I know how to do it and I have experience doing it, but I'm telling you in this environment that we're heading into, it's going to be a challenge. If you say something like that, it shows that you're being very honest and also knowledgeable about what you're gonna be heading into in a potential recession. Okay, next, and this is a big one. It's easy to go online and search for what questions will I be asked as interviewing for a chief marketing officer. But one of the worst things that you can do is only prepare for those potential questions and work as basically like defense. All right, don't go into the interview to play defense. 
Go in to play offense. As I said before, you still need to prepare. Prepare for the potential questions. You need to know about the business, everything that is publicly available about the business because it shows that you've done your homework. If you go in and you don't know anything about their company, you can't call out a press release or a product launch or something that they did recently, it's gonna show that you didn't do your homework, okay? Also, if they ask you questions about, tell us about times where you were able to achieve a great return on ad spend. Tell us about how you've grown revenue or grown profitability. If you don't have answers to these questions, you're going to sort of uh, not answer your way out of the job. But a better strategy of just rather than just preparing for the questions to be asked to you is prepare questions to ask to them. It goes back to my, my number one here, which is prepare to interview them just as much as they interview you because it will show proactivity. It will show that you're looking for the perfect job. You're not just looking to take any job. And it shows that you've chosen them as a potential job for you. Uh, it shows the confidence that you have going into this interview that you can help them become a better company. So ask questions like, what does your supply chain look like? Uh, is there any risk of it drying up? Talk about how marketing is all about driving attention and awareness and conversions to products. And if products don't exist or they're out of stock, then it makes your job much, much harder. And you want to ask about these questions to show that, I, listen, I'm confident in what I can bring to the table, but if I don't have products to sell, then unfortunately that doesn't allow me to do my job. So if you ask these smart questions like supply chain, also marketing budgets, historically, what has caused marketing budgets to go up or down? What do those triggers look like um, previously? And then build confidence in them saying that you're comfortable with helping them set budgets, but you also want to know historically the sensitivity of the company. And especially if their C CFO is in on the interview, you can ask the CFO like what that relationship is like. Ask about the autonomy. What autonomy do you do they expect you to have? Do they want you to come in here and run the show and tell them what to do? Do they want you to ease into it? Do they want to sort of oversee what you're doing for the first 90 days or six months or, or more? So you can get a good feel as to what position you're going to be entering into and also ask them what they expect you to deliver in order to build the trust in order to get the autonomy. Because if you're interviewing for a job where they're not going to give you autonomy as a chief marketing officer, it's probably not a good fit. As a chief marketing officer, the word is chief. You need to be going into a place where you can use your expertise and tell other people what to do based on what is best for the company. You don't want to enter into a position where you're going to be told what to do by the founder or the CFO or the CEO. It's just not a good fit long term. Also ask them, what are their biggest concerns with hiring this position? Get them to talk about previous hires, previous CMOs. And they're not going to throw them under the bus most likely, but talk about the issues that they've had in the past, the concerns that they have, so that you know whether these are things that you are going to avoid, can avoid, won't bring to the table. You want to make sure that you know all the concerns that they have, because if you have answers to all those concerns or you can alleviate those concerns, then it's more likely that you're going to get the job. Be careful, though, that you are not a yes person. That means don't just address every single one of those concerns and say, oh, that's not a problem because of this. Oh, I can handle this. Oh, I can do that. Oh, I can do that. If you do that too much in an interview, then it shows that you're just trying to please them and get the job. All right, and my last tip, uh, this is a great one, not for everybody. If you absolutely need this job, you probably don't want to ask, say this statement, probably. If you're a really good people person, you could probably get away with it because it opens up a lot of honesty. But basically, tell them what would class you out of this job. I do this all the time. I do this in over almost every single interview or prospect meeting for our fractional side of our business. I talk about what would make us not a good fit. And I talk about some of the things I, I presented earlier. You know, sometimes I put it on them. I say, you know, if, if there's supply chain issues, then, you know, we might not be a good fit long term because we can't do our job well. Uh, if there's not a level of trust and autonomy that can be earned within the first 30 days, if that's not the style of the business, then it's probably not a good fit, right? We ask those kinds of questions. But as an individual, you are interviewing for the job, not, you know, as a partner, as a, as a marketing partner in most cases. So talk about what would make you not a good fit for this job. For instance, me personally, I am not very good with details. I'm organized, but I'm not good with details. I need somebody underneath me to help with the little nitty gritty fine tuning. For instance, I'm not even that good at grammar. I need to use Grammarly for almost everything. That being said, I'm a pretty good copywriter. I know it sounds weird. I'm not a good technical copywriter in terms of grammar and things like that, 
I need spell check, but I'm really good at writing romantic or brand focused content and copywriting and taglines and things like that. So I might actually say this in an interview. Again, if I had lots of interviews lined up, I didn't need, need, need this job and I'm still interviewing these different companies for a good fit, I might say that. I might say, listen, if your goal is long-term growth, profitability, and a great brand awareness, great customer service, great customer engagement, I'm the one to plan this out for the next one to five years. But if your goal is to have a project manager, a micromanager, a marketing manager come in here and, and cross every T and dot every I, I'm probably not the right one. I'm going to need help there. I need a project manager. I need a marketing manager to work with me. I need a small team to work with me. That's the best way that we're going to grow together. And then ask them what they're looking for. Again, you're showing your flaws, you're showing your vulnerability, but you're also showing your honesty. And in most cases, companies want a leader. They want somebody who's a great communicator, who can deal with politics, who can deal with personalities, who can lead. And they don't need somebody who can cross every T and dot every I. So presenting that as kind of the final, like, listen, here's who I am and here's what I'm amazing at and here's who I'm not and here's what I'm not great at. So you tell me what you're looking for and if you think I'm a good fit or not. That question can really break down a lot of walls. And uh, in a lot of cases, in, in my case, it's gotten us, it's one of a lot of businesses, a, a lot of business rather. So those are my tips for interviewing for a CMO position. I know a lot of you out there are probably going to be interviewing for jobs, especially if you came from the tech industry because of all the layoffs. So hopefully you found this video valuable. Forward this on to somebody, share it on LinkedIn with your marketing team or your uh, marketing community if you th think it's going to be valuable for them. And good luck with all of your interviews. And if you want any more resources, head over to my website, jtimmerman.com. I have checklists over there, how to write cold email subject lines. You can use this in your job search, uh, jtimmerman.com. And we'll see you in the next video.